specifically uh, in the application of um, technique, uh, posture, um, numerous avenues of different types of em employing your weapon in either close quarters or even longer distances. But dry fire practice is definitely crucial to a successful marksman. Um, starting with, well what should we start with? Let's just start with uh, you know, trigger control which is probably one of the biggest things that I struggle with and uh, I shouldn't even say struggle with I just am always trying to master because you can always get it better you can always improve and while, while you could always you know stop shooting and lose lose uh, speed on or lose technique on your trigger control you should uh, definitely pay more attention to how your finger seats on the trigger so Let's talk about how, when you shoot, you want your fingers properly placed on the face of the trigger. When you pull the trigger, it should be a straight back motion. Now, I'm guilty of pulling right. I don't know why I do it. I just somehow, I just need to remember and to do more shooting and, and take my time a little bit more as far as getting the rapid deployment of my, from my finger from the uh, lower, uh, slide not the slide the lower uh, frame to sit on the trigger face quickly and accurately um, because that right there is gonna mess up your shot more than your grip more than your posture more than anything else because your fingers gonna pull and jerk that frame just enough so that your bullet flies in the wrong direction so we want to do that um, you know you want to keep doing it as much as possible you want to dry fire as much as possible Especially if you have a Glock or an HK or something that you know has more uh, has a more modern design, <clears throat> dry firing doesn't affect your weapon. Um, you make sure you do it. Obviously, you use your head and make sure you clear the weapon first, um, so that you don't get yourself hurt or anybody else hurt in the process. But you just want to make sure you push yourself to keep trying at least five minutes a day, uh, just so that you're so familiar with the way that your trigger feels that you're just used to it already. Now, one of the things I thought I was going to do, especially coming from a 1911, was I thought I was going to cut the trigger and then go to a 1911 and, and uh, 1911 style trigger, like a pyramid or something else, so that I can keep that familiarity. Well, I actually opted not to because um, I carry two Glocks with me, a Glock 20 and then a Glock 36. One's a 10 mil, one's a 45 ACP. And they're a little different and cartridge size but more importantly the triggers are the same so if I pull five and a half pounds in a Glock 20 I should be able to pull five and a half pounds in a Glock 36 and get the same consistent trigger feel and that's why I didn't I decided not to change them and that's not because there's some liability issues or if I shoot somebody what are the courts gonna say no it's not about that it's about making sure that you can employ your weapon equally across the board regardless of which one you have on your body. Now, granted, if I'm carrying a 1911, that four pound trigger pull is gonna be much better. It's gonna be crisper, and there's not gonna be any travel delay in that, in that trigger swing, but you're still gonna hit your target accurately. So, you know, it just depends on what you wanna carry. Now, I've been shooting my Henry rifle and my Marlin rifle a little bit more lately, because I'm just getting more into the style of, of uh, lever action guns and in our previous post we talked about the significance of having a good fighting uh, lever action carbine especially when you're in restrictive states uh, such as uh, California and New York um, one really cool thing about California especially with regards to weapons which you never really hear in a good in a sentence um, is that California's weapon sales are just skyrocketing through the roof uh, as the election year gets closer um, 
and already California is the biggest state with the most gun owners and I would have thought that would have easily gone to a state like Texas or Florida or you know something like Montana or somewhere where the, the populace is smaller but has you know more guns per person ratio well that's not it it's actually California so you would think that with the most the most gun owners in the country in one state we would have the ability to push a little bit better pro-gun legislation but that's not working either because as many pro-guns as we have we have probably equal if not more liberals surrounding us and uh, that, that's causing us some problems in the polls but I don't want to go too far into the politics aspect of things since we're talking about dry fire today but what I was getting to was in the lever action guns the trigger pull is still pretty light in fact it's very reminiscent of the 1911 trigger because when I pull that the Henry trigger it's got you know regular hammer firing mechanism and it fires just like a 1911 does sure my grip angle is different in the rifle than it is in the pistol but after firing you know 357 magnums out of that rifle and realizing that it's uh, um, recoil is super manageable I don't see how anybody could complain about shooting a 357 magnum in, uh, in a rifle I mean it's super light recoil it's great you get an extra extra strong terminal velocity and before you know it you know you're hitting your targets with as much force as you can out of a 155 grain bullet which is great because a 556 bullet is only about 62 grains so you know before I go more into lever action rifles as we were doing before we're gonna uh, we're gonna get our hands on that Henry carbine soon and uh, we're on day what would this be we're on day four of that 10 day waiting period which by the way I was carrying a weapon when I went into Dros my my rifle and now I don't know how I can go in with a war with a rifle with a pistol on me to purchase a rifle but I can't take it on the spot like I don't understand why I have to wait those 10 days and and I know why they're doing that because we got Kamala Harris who is completely uh, in violation of a federal order to remove that 10 day period but she ordered to stay until an en banc court can hear it so you know again I'm dovetailing from uh, dry fire practice but you can see how literally just one rifle or pistol platform can affect training and growth based on choice um, if I can't choose to have the, the right rifle or the right pistol for me and then I have to do, deal with obstacles like a bullet button or like having to learn a new platform like a lever action rifle um, those are going to cause some hurdles uh, especially if you're coming out of the military and you're used to M4s or you're used to M16s or you're used to you know the, the full auto weapons things like that those are going to cause some big learning curves that you're just going to have to get used to because if you live in California which again it sucks yes we know that um, you're going to have to learn how to get used to maximizing your 10 round capacity um, that's unfortunately our state limit so you know I don't like it I don't like it at all we can't I myself included I fund the NRA ILA to fight these um, you know these these laws but the only uh, responsible way to handle it right now because we don't want to cause any uh, undue uh, hardship to ourselves or to those around us is to fight it in the courts now you know if things change and say the state of the union changes and shit starts to go south really fast well then hey we'll just have to adapt and and take things on as they come towards our way but you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but before we even begin to talk about rebellion or begin to talk about uh, you know taking on the government as militia or things like that we need to focus back again to trigger control and just making sure that we use the fundamentals that we were taught or that we are learning at, at the minute to uh, execute our weapons uh, or not execute uh, employ our weapons properly so anyways just make sure you get out there you dry fire make sure that you have plenty of time to give yourself at least you know anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour a week I think is plenty sufficient um, it's not like you have to go to the range every single time you don't have to shoot bullets every single time 
Um, in fact, I think more more successful shooters use dry fire practice more than any other type of practice there is because again the fundamentals is everything once you get the fundamentals down you're golden um, especially when it comes to semi-auto weapons uh, you want to get used to loading those box magazines quick uh, you want to get those magazines in and out of the, the pistol as fast as possible same thing with semi-auto rifles you want to get your, your magazines out in and out as fast as possible in the safest manner so that you can keep your, your rifle moving or your pistol moving um, but it's all technique and on top of technique you know we're going to slowly get into the proper gear that you should have for these types of weapons um, me being that I came from like I said you know prior, three prior deployments to Iraq I want to make sure that I start training myself to be adaptable to wear body armor so from moving from dry fire practice to body armor and uh, load bearing equipment we want to make sure that we can you know use the equipment that we have across as many weapons as possible um, and I, right now literally my body armor is not adaptable to a lever action rifle um, it's just not so I need to figure out an avenue or I need to figure out some old world leather products to uh, figure out how to quickly feed the carbine or the rifle as it runs low or empty um, there isn't really much in the way of speed loading, so I want to make sure that no matter which way I uh, entertain using my rifle, I can think of a faster way to equally um, uh, reloading. And again, in California, it's only 10 rounds, so I only have to worry about a 10 round uh, reload each and every time. I do have uh, Marlin 62, which is a 22 long rifle uh, rifle that I have a speed loader for. And it's the easy, that little speedy loader, I think is what it's called. And you can load you know, 19, 20 rounds of 22 round rifle, and like that, you just literally, it's like a straw of ammo. You just pop, open the top, you fucking dump your ammo in and you're done. But, you know, I think I need to figure out a way to either make some of those same type of uh, tube feeding devices, or just literally do it one bullet at a time. But I can imagine that back in the late 19th century when uh, those new you know confederate soldiers or those union soldiers that were fighting each other uh, once they got their hands on the type of uh, repeating rifle like a henry that loading tube fed one at a time probably wasn't the most optimal solution so we may have to dig up some research and figure out a best way to do this um, also if you're a lever action instructor um, I'm, I'm looking for courses that I can work with an instructor on to uh, share this information with. Uh, it's definitely beneficial for all your, your subscribers and, and my subscribers as well. And we're trying to get uh, techniques down to have men and women that can shoot a lever action rifle as good as an AR-15 or a bolt action rifle because they still serve a purpose. Again, we hear time and time again that these rifles are antiquated, but that's the trend right now. People are going to these rifles because we're tired of dealing with the bureaucratic red tape that comes with AR-15s. I love AR-15s. I got two of them. I have two different styles, one in 223 Wild and one in 5.56. I'm not going to sell either one of them. I'm not going to get rid of either one of them. But at the same token, too, I think it's smart on my end and those, the, those people that follow me to make sure that they're employing a rifle that's legally allowed, obviously, number one, because you don't want to go do a felony for some stupid crime. But more importantly, it should be something that you should be comfortable with shooting a lot. And with 38 Special 357 Magnum combos, you can shoot that rifle a lot, a, a pretty good, fair amount. So, anyways, um, that's just my thoughts for today. Uh, dry fire and body armor and making sure that you can feed that lever action rifle i know those are kind of three separate topics all together but you know those are rifle those are techniques that kind of incorporate on each other because if you don't dry fire and you don't practice reloading then those two aspects are going to affect the type of gear that you have and the gear that you have is going to ultimately support how you fight so if that means I have to go with an old cartridge belt uh, made by some fancy leather company or if I have to get 
a dump pouch and fill that with literally with a bunch of different ammo uh, bullets uh, say, say I have a dump pouch filled with like 100 rounds 357 Magnum is that going to work? Do I want that bouncing around in my gear? Probably not. So we're going to figure out a way to take care of this cartridge situation or feeding situation sooner than later. So anyways, thanks for checking in. Didn't want to keep you too long, but uh, we'll keep practicing and uh, keep training. Thanks.